As it turns out, I have been casting metal entirely wrong. If you do a lot of metal casting, I'm sure you can come up with a million reasons why, but we're going to focus on one right now, and then by the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how you can avoid the same problem. Two methods in particular. And yes, I might have been giving you incorrect or at least incomplete information this entire time. Sorry about that. But first, what in particular have I been doing wrong, and what kind of problems does that cause? Well, up until now, I have almost entirely been using the wrong alloys. Alloys are just a mix of different metals. Basically, everything around you is a mix. Uh, almost nothing is a pure element. Uh, copper wiring is fairly pure, some jewelry, though not all. Uh, and pretty much everything else is a mix. There's generally one main metal, and then a couple that are added in. Usually, usually one main one added in, sometimes a couple. The atoms arrange themselves in interesting ways. Uh, we're not going to get into it, though. And it drastically changes the properties of the metal. It doesn't take much, either. Like, the difference between mild steel and high carbon steel is less than 2% carbon. Razor thin margins here. Same with aluminum bronze. You get 2%, just 2%, too much aluminum, it's worthless. It will just shatter. This is important in metal casting, particularly because of the metal flowing. Think of like water flowing, for example, versus motor oil in the winter. It's a big difference. They both flow, they're both liquid. They, do, they are not the same. And it's not just viscosity, like there's other stuff. We're, we're not gonna get into it, but the point is, it has to flow into the mold, conform into the shape, and get into all the little details before the metal cools off and freezes. Alloys designed for metal casting do that job better. This is why previously I said, don't use cans for casting, that's true. Use something that's already been cast. So use cast aluminum for casting, that will save you. And the reason there is, for casting you want silicon. Silicon allows them to flow better. It does the same to a bunch of other metals. Cast iron has silicon in it, along with carbon. Uh, silicon bronze flows really well because of the silicon added to the copper. Alloys designed for doing casting do better when you use them for casting. It should be obvious, right? But there are many ways to cast metal. Everything I've done on this channel so far, pretty much, everything successful anyway, has been gravity-fed sand casting. That means I form like an open area in the sand and I pour metal in and gravity pulls it in. It's pretty simple, it's straightforward, it works. The alloy of aluminum that I've been using primarily is A380. It's called A380. I use that alloy because I can get it for free. And you know, you can't be free. Uh, but A380 is about like 8 or 9% silicon, which is plenty. That's more than enough silicon. It's also got some zinc and some copper and some other stuff. But there's a problem. A380 is a casting alloy, yes. But it is a die casting alloy. And die casting usually has a metal die, a steel die, and something forces the aluminum in. Not gravity. A plunger or pressure of some kind. I recently had the pleasure of talking to a semi-retired foundryman. I guess if you're good at your job, they don't let you just retire. They keep calling him back. And he said A380, in his experience, is forced in sometimes with up to 100 PSI of pressure. 100 PSI. Now, I can't do that with gravity. And if I was able to pressurize it that much, the sand would just blow out everywhere. 100 PSI of pressure guarantees the aluminum will conform to every little detail inside that die. It has no choice. Basically what that means, and what he told me upon prodding, is that A380 does not flow well enough to give me high quality parts using my process, gravity fed sand casting. And this hit me kind of like a ton of bricks recently when I did the, the wood and aluminum test and then the bronze and aluminum test, I kind of did them back to back. The bronze poured like water. The aluminum poured like motor oil. And you can tell exactly what I'm talking about if you look at like the castings themselves. I said the castings weren't important, but I did save them, I'll show you. Now here's the aluminum one, you can see it, it worked just fine, but it lacks nice crisp edges along the, uh, the place where it poured in, and especially near the ends. You can see the ends are rounded over, like there's a huge amount of surface tension. And the corners underneath, like the bottom edges, also didn't form very, very cleanly. Like the wood had sharp edges on it, and this casting is very rounded off. It looks terrible. It was not flowy enough to fill in those gaps. It's, it, it should have flowed in just fine, but it didn't. And that's commercial level A380 alloy. Like, I didn't make that alloy. Now here's the tin bronze that I made. The assumption here is that if I make it, it's probably not as good as an industrial process. But I made this bronze alloy, and take a look at these. Not only did it fill into the bottom of where the wood was, but it leaked in between where the wood and the sand was. And then it leaked in between where the wood and the wood was. Now they were tight, pretty tight close up together. And it still formed these little flanges poking out, which are paper thin, which means the aluminum couldn't make a 90 degree corner, but this could make paper. I could, I could almost make like 24 gauge sheet just by casting this stuff. You know, there, there's a good reason why they've been using that alloy for thousands of years. It's really good stuff. 
So how am I going to fix this moving forward? Well, the alloy of choice for casting aluminum is A356. Now I've heard this a bunch, but it wasn't until I talked to that guy and saw this back to back that it really hit me that, no, I need an alloy exactly designed for what I'm doing. Moral here, use the right alloy. So how do you get the right alloy? There's a couple ways, sticking with aluminum. A356, uh, the number one way I would recommend buying that or any, any metals you want, buy ingots of the right kind of alloy. Buy certified ingots. You can buy A356, you can buy 380, you can buy zinc alloys and tin, pewter and all that stuff. You can Google and find places that have it. Usually A356 from what I've found is sold in like massive like 22 pound or 50 pound like super ingots. Uh, just do the math and make sure you're not getting screwed, like dollars per pound. But aluminum is pretty cheap in general. And a pound of aluminum is a lot more aluminum than a pound of brass. And you're probably going to make, make your money back if you consider the time wasted using the wrong aluminum. If you're casting one of the copper alloys, you know, brasses or bronzes, probably buy it. That's easy, the easiest way to get the right alloy. There's silicon alloys, silicon bronze alloys, Everdure. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've only seen it written. Uh, that's really popular among people who cast sculptures, bronze sculptures. So that's easy to find. If you buy the ingots, you will always get the alloy you want with no surprises, unless you go like Alibaba or something. Like, don't expect China to send you the right stuff. The second method, if you don't want to buy it, is to be pickier than your scavenging. So there's a lot of aluminum in this world. Most of it's not for you. The good stuff, the A356, is like car wheels, cast aluminum car wheels, cylinder heads, intake manifolds, a lot of those kind of parts. Not pistons, pistons, even cast pistons, are usually a totally different alloy, and I'm not going to get into that here, but you know, if they're free, grab them. Uh, with wheels, avoid like big rig wheels or like sporty, some sporty car wheels, like high-end sports car wheels, they're often forged, but like the alloy wheel option on a factory like Chevy Malibu, those are definitely A356 alloy. Junkyards are full of these wheels, uh, Facebook Marketplace is full of these wheels. You could probably call up like a body shop and say, hey, you got anyone who crashed their car and you got them a new wheel and you're just gonna scrap the old one? Like you might be able to buy the old wrecked one off of them. Just give them like more than scrap price because they're doing you a favor here. And good luck breaking those things up. Brass, which is copper with some zinc added in, uh, I probably wouldn't bother scavenging that unless you're like really careful because like door handle brass is different from plumbing brass, but not all door handle brass is the same. Not all plumbing brass is the same. And because we're talking razor thin margins here, you might not want to mix all the plumbing brass together. It might work, it might not. That's all I'm saying. You should probably just buy an ingot of the stuff, like this one. Ugh, that's really heavy. Bronze is even trickier because there's so many different kinds of bronze out there and I can't tell them apart by looking. They're all bronze color. But you can buy bronze ingots. Pewter also, some people say they can find pewter at like thrift shops or whatever. But pewter is not all the same either because that's been changing too. They keep taking all the lead out of it and that changes and then they add in other stuff. Pewter's for cheaters though. Like really, it melts like 400 degrees. And lastly, if you insist on making your own bronze, start with tin bronze. Get some copper. Most plumbing copper is mostly pure. All electrical copper is pretty pure. Uh, and then lead-free solder. Some lead-free solders are 95% tin. If it doesn't tell you on the thing what the alloy is, don't use it. Do like 90% copper, 10% tin. And when I say that, I mean by weight. Get a postage scale. I'll link one down below. Just a general like measure in grams or something. So my advice to reiterate, method number one, use the correct alloy for the process you're going to use and buy the ingots if you wanna be absolutely certain. Number two, be really picky with your scavenging. If you want good aluminum and you don't wanna worry about anything else, get car wheels, cast aluminum car wheels. Don't melt cans. Most cast aluminum is the wrong stuff. I will link down below where you can buy certain kinds of ingots. They are not affiliated with me. If you have any questions at all, jump on the Discord. There's a link to that in the, in the description. And uh, good luck. Don't burn yourself too badly. <laughs>